All right, sir. I am going to hand over the chair to Dr. Ashok Das. He will run the session. Ashok is a good friend of mine. He only got me, he only got me to stop playing golf and doing some work with Thai. <laughs> and I have gotten in the Arvind view, <laughs> like Chakra view. So first he said, you come and share your use case. Then he says, you can also chair it. All right, so here I am chairing the session. Uh, definitely, I am also a use case person, so we'll show you what, the, what we have done in the villages of India. By the way, I, my association with Thai goes all the way back to 2008 when we started Thai Clean Tech Special Interest Group. And then it has become Thai IoT, Thai whatnot, right? And that's where we uh, worked closely with Arvind and a lot of others, including ma'am. <laughs> Uh, all right. Okay. Can I invite all my panelists, please? Amit, Sridhar, Sridhar sir, please. Thank you. And Ajit, Ajit sir. <coughs> So, format is very simple. We'll put a land, uh, you know, scape out the landscape, what we are here for, what is the LP one going to do. And then we'll have four speakers speak. And then I will really just open it to the audience for Q&A. Okay, there is no Q&A between the speakers. <laughs> All right. So, <coughs> what we need to look at is the next slide. <laughs> Can someone help me or help with this technology? All right. So there are various uh, technologies which we are working on for the machine to machine communication. That's our focus of this session. How do we communicate between the machines? And uh, Wi-Fi, LAN, WAN, wired, wireless, all of these are options which are traditional including GPRS, GSM. On the non-traditional, the new technology side, we are getting all these low pan, uh, you know, uh, 4, uh, 8, 802.11G, all those. These are buzzwords I am not very familiar with, so please bear with me. I have experts who will explain you all of those. Uh, <coughs> next, what the various issues that we are going to deal with in IoT, M2M connectivities are the Wi-Fi and GSM are the standard people are trying to use. There are issues with that, and again, experts will deal with, uh, will go through that and tell you. Then uh, recently, DOT and TRI has started accumulating and creating a vision or around these M2M communications and what needs to be done. Uh, what we are here today, and actually they are also proposing that M2M should have a service provider. But then in the service provider scenario, there are multiple issues that we need to deal with, including you know, SIM-based registration, service provider, charges, etc. So what, what, what should the IIT really do, IIT landscape should really do, right? Uh, many companies, many countries have started working on developing their own range where IoT devices should work. Right. This is a free range, this is a special range, uh, including China, USA, UK, Australia, all of these guys. Where is India? We don't know yet. We don't have any such standard here, and that is the whole crux of forming that uh, DOT and tri-communication panel to work on that stack. Uh, <clears throat> so what we will do, we will go through a few case studies, and in those case studies, we will see what are people using today? what are the issues, how they are solving it, and what is going ahead. So we have uh, Tata Telecommunications, they will tell us what is the, how they are working on the low pan, and of course Amit will go through another case study, and similarly Avijit will go through what are the various scenarios that needs to be looked at for low pan. So since I am here, I will just continue with my case study and show you what we have done and what we are uh, facing, what challenges we faced in our case and how we addressed it. So what we do is uh, our flagship product is called Smart Nanogrid. 
are working on smart villages. Our focus in the smart village is really farmers. So how do we move the farmers up the value chain? Means our development has to target productivity, livelihood, and uh, micro and livelihood creation for the villagers, other than just agriculture. And that is how the progress will happen. As one of my farmers gave me the slogan, "Pani hai to kisan hai, bizli hai to rozi hai." So electricity becomes one of the key component to develop these livelihood activities. So we really want our villagers to become prosumers rather than being treated as consumers. <coughs> so these are the various components of smart interventions that we are looking at for the holistic development of the village, uh, which includes good governance, uh, water sufficiency, energy sufficiency, livelihood is a key component, health services, digital connectivity, agricultural interventions. You'll see, when people go from one crop in this village, I'll show you because of the water, when you go to three, four crops, how they should go, what are the various interventions. So we are working with experts in all of these areas to bring the right interventions in these sectors, including education and skill development. You must uh, be aware that we have developed the entire solution at an engineering college in Orissa. And engineering college is not only my living laboratory and la R&D lab, but also provides all the training and skill development. So that is how you create, we have created the whole ecosystem to support the solutions. So what, is the, what are the various IoT devices or what we have done? Uh, this should be the last uh, one, but no problem animation problem. So what we have, this is a village. In this village, we have a couple of uh, households, about 140, and we have street, we put street lights throughout the village, then we have irrigation pumps, we have uh, uh, micro enterprise zone in the corner, you will see. And then we have a solar power plant that uh, powers the villages through the electrical cables, through spread throughout the village. Uh, it goes to the uh, through a distribution box, then to a control box, then to household loads and other agricultural loads. These control boxes were our main devices, the, uh, my, our nano arm, which is the IoT device. And that is spread throughout the village to control various number of nodes, number of loads, and it serves multiple purpose. And it communicates to my central server or gateway, whatever you call it. We, we have different options there. And what that does, plus some sensors. So we have a lot of sensors in the village also to look at various aspects of the power plant generation, the moisture level of the, uh, of the soil, how much irrigation should be done, what is the, whether my solar is generating right amount of power or not, whether temperature is right. All of these parameters that needs to be monitored to make sure that the system is working right. This, the local serv system also does metering, billing, payment, uh, uh, customer service, scheduling of power. All the street lights automatically switch on, automatically switch off. There is no, no uh, interventions from anybody. And then demand supply management, which is the crux of smart grid. That how do we manage our load to maximize the power, power, power plant load factor, PLF, to minimize the losses and maximize the resource uses. For example, this is a chart which shows that solar radiation varies according to the bell chart, and how do I manage my different loads to make sure that I do not exceed, or I do not need excess power, or whatever power I have, I'll use it to manage all my load. So the question was, how do I communicate between these uh, IoT devices and my gateway? central server. We looked at various options, including Wi-Fi, Zigbee, various of all of these, Lopan, uh, LoRa, none of them are even available at that time, about a year ago. And uh, we also looked at PLC, I forgot to mention about, and good old OFC. Now, our requirement was that it must be low power, because see, I am in a power-starved zone. This is a remote village. Whatever power I generate, I want it to be used by the villagers, not by my gadgets and devices. So that is a basic requirement. Second, it must be low cost. Otherwise, I cannot provide service to my village 
at the price point that is sustainable. Third is that it must be low maintenance. You know, I do not have bandwidth to go and keep on fixing things in the village. It's a lot of expense. So, following is that it must be managed or, you know, to be maintainable by the villagers. Is it smart enough? Is it simple enough that my villagers can work on it? Right? So, that is where we went for fiber optics cable, which was cheap, which was the cheapest solution for me at that time. Uh, Wi-Fi didn't work out. PLC was very expensive. So through, uh, through the fiber optics cable, we have connected all the devices. They work, they communicate with each other, they do all the functions. And we also have hot, hot Wi-Fi hotspots where consumers can go and interface and get their billing, payment, etc. done. And for my remote monitoring, I have a satellite dish. We sat there, which converts, which communicates the data to the cloud for us to look at remotely what is happening in the village. And based on our infrastructure, many of the other functions are coming, like telemedicine, teleeducations, all of telehealth, all of these facilities are using this infrastructure to build upon that. Oh, what happened? This is not... I don't know what happened. This is an old file. All right. Uh, I had something else, but what I'll tell you is that what we are doing with the remote monitoring is that whatever we see in a remote village on our centers, same thing the villager sees. And we have only the villagers working in the field. They go and they have implemented it. They maintain it. They go and troubleshoot it. We, our people are going only when there is a disaster like lightning, etc. then we have to go and intervene. But otherwise, our model is that we should be able to remotely monitor it, control it in a command center, because it's very difficult to get such resources into the village. So the whole economy, the whole solution has to be sustainable at the village level. And that is why we have developed this model and concept. Thank you.